One and all, it's that time of day, that time of week, that time of year, that time of your life for Talk Gaming. Welcome, one and all. Glad to have you here. We are going to have a good time. Sorry uh, that intro was extra long. About 10 seconds away from the end of the first song, which usually we only do one song, I realized, like, oh crap, I have no idea where I set my phone to silence it as I normally do. So I frantically started looking around and even still, I have no clue where it is. So if you're trying to get a hold of me, I'm sorry. I honestly have no clue where I put it. I I am at a loss um, because I have lost it. So that's that's the dealio right now. Phoneless Luke, my stepsister, no, it's not stepsister, sister-in-law 
I'm bad at these things, uh, is currently in labor. I'm going to be an uncle probably by the end of the day, which is bizarre to think about. And my seven-year-old brother is also going to be an uncle, which is even weirder to think about. So, uh, that's, that's what we're dealing with. Um, am I sitting on it? No. That would be really funny if I if I were, wouldn't it? I honestly have no clue where I put it. I have like a, a bizarre number of things. If you can like see this perspective, there's hand sanitizer for some reason. Went to the dump today as part of my job. I have this really nice, high quality cigar cutter. Like, look at this. It's it like slides open. It's like really, really nice. Comes with a lifetime warranty so that you can actually uh, just take it back into the shop you bought it at and they will replace it even if it gets a little dull which is nice um i have a buck knife for self-defense against uh people who come in and, and try to get all fagazi on our party like i got a lot of stuff but my phone is not one of the things that i have at this moment, which is just fantastic. So if uh, my brother is trying to contact me to tell me that uh, little baby Theodore has been born, I'm sorry, I don't know where it is. I honestly have no clue. Um, I'm at a loss, I don't know. So that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, Note 8, I want the Note 8. Uh, I had the Note 7 which was the phone that kept exploding, right? Uh, and uh, it was the greatest thing I've ever owned. Like, it's seriously, it's hard to explain to people who didn't have it or didn't get to feel it or hold it. But it honestly was like the single best purchase and money spent I'd ever used. It literally was replacing my computer to the point where I, if I had to like respond to emails or uh, do like anything, other than making YouTube videos or gaming, I wanted to do it on the phone. And it was, uh, it like replaced my laptop essentially. And, and of course it was heartbreaking when it got recalled. Then I got a replacement, then it got recalled again. And so I settled for the Google Pixel, which now I can't find. So I'm just, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Honestly, the note, the note design, it's a massive phone and it's not for everybody, but if it's even slightly for you, it's going to be the single greatest thing you've ever owned. Um, and I can highly recommend it. I really want the Note 8, but I cannot afford it. I've literally sat down with an Excel, uh, with an Excel sheet and done all the math to try to find a way to make it work. And with tuition, I'm moving in a, a month or two. Um, it, it's just, it's not feasible and it breaks me heart. So I'll probably get it like during one of their sales in the spring hopefully um but yeah that's what we're up to how are you guys how are you mm. ring man don't worry we've been going for like seven minutes plus this is dvr so you should be able to scroll back if you want to start from the very very beginning um it's one of the cool things about youtube live is that you can go back and effectively like if you're five minutes behind the rest the only difference is the chat um and you can see the chat on screen anyway, so it's not that crucial that you have it. Um, uh, totally, totally live, unless you want to actively participate. Anyway, um, today I will be honest with you guys, I was a little hard pressed to find a lot of stuff to talk about. So we're going to talk about some stuff, we're going to analyze some gameplay footage, try to be uh, very, very... Um, critical about a game that I've been very excited about. We're going to try to be even-handed, level-headed, and it's it's uh, going to be probably, you know, a shorter-lived show. Um, I will be doing a vlog today. I'm filming it tonight. I literally cannot tell you what it's about or why something important is happening tonight because people I know watch my videos. It's always weird when they tell me they do, but they do. Um, I probably have some people watching now who know me personally. And uh, if I let this news slip, the entire surprise is spoiled. So tight lipped the vlog. It'll make sense. You'll just uh, you'll see. Don't worry, Ring Man. Uh, we're going to be talking about DLC, <laughs> paid DLC mods. Um, quite a bit. 
quite a bit. I have some things to say. I did ask for you guys' uh, pers or personal opinions specifically on the Discord, and I was asking what you wanted and what you thought about the paid mods um, and the Bethesda credits, because I want to be even-handed with it. I did a video earlier this week bashing Bethesda for uh, their storytelling and their lack of competency when it goes or comes to um, uh, lore specifically, and I, I felt like I might be beating a dead horse if I did another video right after on the paid mods, but I think it's important to mention it. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna probably get into that just a little and and try. Um, AK forty seven Ola uh, slash game reviews. When does uh, the syndicate critique come out? Um, it, probably, hopefully this next week. I got into a bad habit. Um, and don't worry, we're going to get into the first topic here in just a minute. Um, I got into a bad habit doing trying to do a critique every week. And what that meant was that I was doing essentially three to four weeks worth of work. And I was trying to cram it into a weekend. And really, that's what it is. YouTube on this scale is about a part-time job where you're working maybe five hours a day-ish. Um, now, some of that work isn't super intense. Sometimes you're just playing through the game and taking notes while you play it and recording the footage. But then other times you're actually writing stuff out and then you're researching and then you're concepting, then you're editing and shooting and then reshooting. Like it, it takes a lot of work and I was rushing a lot of the critiques and... Um, I went back and watched, I, I hit play on the Witcher 3 critique I did that's been very successful and people have lauded heavily. And I tried to watch it just to see what was so good about it. And I caught myself 20 minutes into the video. I, I just watched 20 minutes of it and I didn't even know what happened. I didn't intend to, but I just had because it was fluid and it worked and it was thoughtful and carefully crafted. And I was like, you know what? I need to go back to making that. I need to put more time in, not try to rush these things out to just get critiques out. I need to take my time with it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and uh, just not watch it. So we will, um, yeah, we're, we're going to try to try to do all that. But um, I saw a, a a comment I wanted to respond to. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I've also been playing uh, uh, various things, such as episode one of... Wait, full screen. I wasn't prepared for this segue. Episode one of Life is Strange Before the Storm. And this is taken specifically from the review that GameSpot did, just because it's, it's visually a little easier. I'm going to drop this down. I'm also going to rescale it a little bit. And I'm going to throw in the chat so that you guys can see if you're watching this later. Now, this has actually been surprisingly polarizing uh, for a lot of people. Now, if you didn't play the original Life is Strange, which you're seeing on screen right now, it was released in 2015. It's episodic, so it's not incredibly uh, fluid. It's about two hours per episode, five episodes uh, on the whole and so it's about a 10 hour game and you can get it for 20 to 25 dollars and i would heavily recommend it if you are a narrative type player and lots of people who watch my channel tend to be more narrative leaning and um so i can recommend life is strange to you now some people they have little things that uh they're bugged by um and i can understand that such as the dialogue, they didn't like the way the dialogue was structured. They didn't like some of the, the sort of novelty features and gameplay mechanics that were employed in Life is Strange. But one of the things that most people will agree with is that the art direction and the feeling, the tone of Life is Strange was very specifically chosen and handled in such a way that it made you feel this consistent sort of nostalgic... Um, I'm not sure how exactly to put it. it. It's a very particular feeling that Life is Strange gave you while you went through the story. And it's hard to recapture something like that. And Before the Storm is a great example of how hard it can be 
to recapture that. Now, if you're not familiar, this blue haired girl that you're seeing on screen right now is named Chloe. She and Max were basically the two main stars of uh, Life is Strange, the original. This game, uh, Before the Storm, is the prequel to that story and essentially tells the story of uh, what happened to Chloe after Max left town. Now, this is pre-release footage, um, but it actually looks a bit better than the footage in the final game, believe it or not. Uh, one of the reasons they actually switched engines, there's two things that happened that were significant. They switched engines and they also went and, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to correct something real quick. Yes, save that. They switched engines to Unity before they were using, I think, a proprietary thing um, that was really glitchy. I had a glitch occur multiple times while I played through the original Life is Strange, even after, like, two years after release. And uh, the, so they switched to Unity, which was apparently supposed to, like, help with graphics and those glitches, make animations look better. They were really proud of this. And uh, as far as I can tell, it hasn't done any of that. In fact, everything looks slightly worse and duller. It looks really rushed, actually. It has the same feeling, like with that highlighting, the kind of sketch look, but it doesn't actually um, do a whole lot for me. The other issue is that they're trying to echo what the original game was, but everything in the original game was meant to echo what was going on inside Uh the mind of Max, the main character, who was an artist, she was a photographer, she had an eye for those things, and everything had this very handwritten feel, and she had a journal that you could read through as you went through the story to keep up with it and see more of what was going on in her head, and you could take those notes, and so the world was being framed from her perspective with her mind sort of circling um, all of these things as she went through the world and it was very very interesting um but now it doesn't really make sense chloe is not like that chloe is not a photographer chloe's not an artist and they're implying that she looks at the world in much the same way and i just don't think that that's true um i don't think that makes sense in terms of characters now the other big issue of course is that the original life is strange this isn't really a spoiler it's basic knowledge had one key gameplay mechanic and that was that uh max could basically rewind time and you could go through certain sequences obtain knowledge and then rewind it and then go forward then rewind it again and you could kind of play with it and that was the cool mechanic is that you could do things and then rewind time so you gain that knowledge but no one would know that you gain the knowledge or maybe you do things and don't rewind time just so that you can see the the effect of that action really really interesting in this prequel there is none of that because of course you're playing as chloe and not as max so what's the interesting gameplay mechanic? Well, it's essentially this sort of verbal tug of war that you do, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, and it's nowhere near as fun at all. It's just, it's just not super fun. Now, um, Games Are Strange uh, was what I titled this episode, I believe. And the reason I did that was because I've spoken with several people who uh, absolutely loathed uh, this this prequel and at least the initial the first episode and they absolutely hated it they thought it was a disaster they thought it was terrible no one should play it um, somebody I've been on a podcast with Carrick from ACG he uh, did not like this this prequel whatsoever he thought it was ham fisted that it didn't catch the same tone that it was clunky it seems rushed it's not anywhere near as interactive it just doesn't have that same feeling that the original did but i've also spoken with other people who thought it was uh ingenious if you look at the steam reviews right now in fact i i suppose we actually probably could uh if i pull up and we can see what some of those other people are saying because there's two sides of this, and this is one of the interesting things, is that something seemingly simple, like, is this prequel good or is it bad? It can be so damn polarizing that it's a little baffling. And games are strange in that way, because they can make one person absolutely just fall in love with it, and 
connect with it on a deep and intimate level. And then other people will just not connect with it at all, will loathe it, and it'll be a total disaster, total dumpster fire. Um, so what if I, what if I do this? Would that work? Oh, oh, nope, that didn't work. I tried going in big picture mode. I thought it would work. Exit big picture. No big picture for us. I'm sorry. This is, um, this is a little ghetto, but we're, we're ghettoing to the point. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, that works. That works for me. Switch, switch scenes. There we go. Right here, this is where we're at. This is on the, the main page. And you see it's actually overwhelmingly positive in terms of reviews. And I, I was surprised when I saw that after hearing what Carrick had said about it. And it's it was a little baffling. Like uh, this one, holy blank, guys, it's here. For most people who bought and played the original Life is Strange, you've been waiting on this for months on end. An expansion on the world and characters we loved and a new focus on the side protagonist, Chloe. Uh, it's... I cried again. Graphics quality, low, medium, high, hella high, 10 out of 10 game of the year. Um, there are a few cringe moments, but I guess that comes with playing a teenage girl as a man. Never, nevertheless, if you enjoyed the original, the first episode is pretty solid. So a lot of people, then these guys have put in twice the time. So they played through it twice, 5.4 hours, 4.9, uh, 6.1. He's probably played through it three times. Um, it's just really interesting. It's really interesting. So one thing can be received really well and another can be received really, really poorly. And um, it, it's just a matter of perspective, especially when it comes to narrative stuff. And uh, Life is Strange is actually a very, very polarizing game to begin with. A lot of people really enjoyed it. A lot of people absolutely hated it. And it's just, it's, it's weird. I don't know what it is. It's the same thing with The Witcher 3. Some people loved it. Some people absolutely hated it, thought it was too dry, too slow. And I was actually the same way with a lot of different games. When you think about it, I'm sure you're, the, you're the same way. Uh, when I initially sat down to play New Vegas, for instance, I could not get into it. I didn't understand how my brother could find this to be fun. And then I went back to it like six months later and all of a sudden I was hooked and I played six hours in one sitting and didn't know what had happened. So weird things can happen really quickly and it's just, it's a little baffling. It's a little, a little baffling. Let me, um, pull this. Is, this was the article I wanted to pull up. This is it. Okay. Okay. We'll get to that in just a second. Here we go. Um, the next one, this is uh, just officially to uh, squash any any lingering suspicions. Yes, the target uh, Bethesda Game of Thrones leak was indeed fake. It's, it's apparently some glitch in their system where it's easy to create a brand and then a product under that brand. I don't understand how that could happen easily, but apparently it's... It's uh, completely fake. A Target representative said, quote, this is not a real product. We're sorry for any confusion. Um, it was not specified if this was done as a prank, but nevertheless, the fact remains that a Bethesda-made Game of Thrones game will only exist in our imaginations for now. Now, it's previously been uh, reported that Bethesda was offered the Game of Thrones license, but turned it down to focus on Fallout 4. Hmm. Now, this is what I've always been a little baffled with is uh, why in God's green earth would you want Bethesda to make a Game of Thrones game? Why on earth would you think that's a good idea? What makes Game of Thrones interesting to begin with is the story. Okay, in terms of visuals, they aren't doing anything that hasn't already been done. Whether you're talking, I mean, literally you can point to any fantasy, whether you're talking video games specifically or movie or TV show, they've done it before. And many of them have done it better. So you're left with the narrative being the primary focal point that makes it interesting. Now, do you really think that Bethesda is going to hire George R.R. R. Martin to come on and write every quest and every story? No. 
No. Pete Hines has said multiple times that Bethesda is focused on trying to have a good time when they're creating the game. It's seriously like a daycare for game developers where they sit around. They said, well, we just want you to make sure you're having fun while making these side quests. I don't I could give a crap if you're having fun. It's your job to make a good side quest. Do you think game development is always a blast? No. Lots of it is very tough. Lots of it is very, very miserable and, and it's hard work. But that's true of any job that's worth doing. The difference is Bethesda's Pete Hines, the VP of marketing, has said in multiple tweets that uh, the kid in the fridge, um, many side quests that you do in Fallout 4, um, I mean, probably uh, like every other side quest that involves uh, any semblance of plot hole or strange thing. The fact that Piper is willing to abandon um, her paper and newspaper route and, or not route, but newspaper business right after the mayor threatens to shut her business down and to like get her sister. She just ups and leaves to go follow this stranger around the Commonwealth. Really strange stuff. He says, well, we're not focused on uh, the realism of a, a game world that has ghouls and, and giant creatures and stuff. It's like, well, if you don't take that seriously, how are you going to take seriously a world where there's dragons and where there's big combat sequences and all sorts of cool stuff? Like it's, the idea that Bethesda making a Game of Thrones game would be a good thing is absolutely absurd. And it shows the people who are excited for that have such a superficial and, and really shallow opinion of what makes Game of Thrones good and uh, what ultimately makes Bethesda games interesting and fun. All it would be is basically a big narrative mod for Skyrim. And at that point, why not? We know they're going to do the narrative bad. So just have them do Elder Scrolls 6 and have that narrative be a joke. But no one's going to care because it'll be pretty and it'll be in a new space and it'll be cool. That's all you really need to worry about. That's all you really need to do. And um, so, yeah, this, when people got all excited about this, it was just absurd I, I thought it was stupid it's you don't want this you don't want this uh, i mean i would rather rip a band-aid off my grundle than play a bethesda game of thrones game it would be a disaster absolute disaster unequivocally no doubt oh my goodness um there we go uh, yes, uh, uh, Obsidian making a Game of Thrones game? Absolutely. Now, I actually went back and I've been playing, uh, let me, I can actually check right now. I actually, let's look at this. This is how ghetto this is. You watch like other podcasts and especially gaming podcasts and they do this. They, they're talking about a video game and something and they want to pull something and it's like really crappily made. It's just like a static background with voices or maybe they have webcams, but it just kind of stuck on there. It looks like garbage. There's no care in it. There's no soul. Here you get soul. You get heart. And uh, here, right, right here. Let me collapse these down. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I can show you this. What are you going to do? Hack into my, my computer? This right here. Can I zoom in? Is this how this works? I don't know. So I went back and I started playing through New Vegas. Um, maybe for a video. Who knows? Um, basically, I just want to be very, very careful uh, whenever I criticize something. And I'm going to... I plan on doing an ultimate critique in the style of The Witcher 3 one on New Vegas, specifically comparing it to Fallout 4 and to see if it really is better or interesting. And um, it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out because I, I am trying to be very, very critical and very honest about it. And yes, the, the file, the hard drive in my computer that is four terabytes um, that is specifically set aside for YouTube shiz is called YouTube shiz. Uh, you better believe it. Um, so yeah, I've started going through new Vegas and each of these is about, can I highlight that? That's an hour and 20 minutes. This was five minutes cause new Vegas crashed. Of course, 56, uh, 52, this was like 20. Yeah. So like three and a half hours ish three and a half to four hours um, of footage. And that was in like one sitting and I had a great time. It was, it was fantastic. I enjoyed it. 
I enjoyed it. Um, and I, I actually legitimately love it. And the narrative is coming back to me. And I'm like, I understand why this was so good. And I had the freedom. I went and for the first time in my life of playing New Vegas, uh, I, I went back and I turned against Good Springs and with the Powder Gangers went through, killed everybody. Powder Gangers took over the town. And then I killed all the power powder gangers, and uh, so it's my town now, and that's it. Like, I could do that. I I was able to kill Trudy. I killed Sunny Smiles. I killed Old Man Pete. I killed the Doc Mitchell. I killed all those guys, and I was allowed to. It wasn't like uh, Mama Murphy, where I I tried to blow her brains out. And I, I couldn't because the game didn't want that to happen. And so you just it permanently, you can't kill them. Even if you go into the console commands, you know, tilde, um, kill all and hit enter, nothing happens. They just fall to the ground and kind of ache their knees. And it's, it's really bad because they don't want to give you actual freedom. Um, it, it irks me. It irks me. Um, Maur Hazon, uh, I, I'm always terrible with your name, uh, save the question about um, Uncharted Lost Legacy. I will get to it. Okay, I will get to it. I want to just get through these no news pieces. Um, the fact that they wanted Mama Murphy to be essential, an essential character that's unkillable, I think explains how terrible that that uh, narrative actually is. Or maybe just how full of themselves they think they they are. I don't know. I don't know. South Park, the fractured but whole, will be uncensored worldwide. And this picture explains a lot. Um, there's uh, been lots of confusion, especially if you are a viewer, a member of the bowel movement who lives in Australia or Germany. There was a lot of concern that they were going to um, actually get a bunch of the games censored. There were parts of, I believe, the original uh stick of truth that was banned and uh specifically the part in the alien ship with the anal probe that was banned uh i believe in australia and this time around looks like it's it's all being allowed in which is very good i'm excited about that you guys get to play the actual game and not a dumbed down um dumbed down version of it uh so Congratulations. I hope just the game isn't dumbed down from Ubisoft. That would suck if Ubisoft dumbed it down so it could get past all those legal boards. Or oh, I don't know which it is. I don't know if the legal boards set down and said, okay, we're going to let it through. Or if it was actually Ubisoft dumbing it down, making it a little bit more uh, sensitive, maybe. Maybe sympathetic to sensitive people. I'm not sure. But from the looks of it, it sounds like it's a full-on South Park adventure. So I'm really excited. Um, and yes, we're all very hyped. I cannot wait. When is it set for now? When's the release? It should say on here. October 17th. October 17th. We're going to play the crap out of that. You better believe it. I just am going to have no money. That's the issue. I'm going to have no money at all for any of this because we got in october we got um assassin's creed origins we have uh of course the fractured but whole we got a prep for um whatever it's called uh the lost wildlands or something for horizon zero dawn launching november 7th um i mean there's there's a lot of games i always forget uh i mean of course the the god of war not god of war um Shadow of War sequel, you know, follow up to uh, Shadow of of Mordor. That's coming out. It's just, I'm 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 in trouble. Yeah, don't buy coffee. That's what I'm gonna have to do. Don't worry. This this is actually from two days ago, a day ago, something like that. I've been pacing myself, so uh, I hope you guys are proud of me. I'm trying to wean myself off because really, it is insane. I got two giant jugs of Snapple, strawberry, kiwi, whatever the hell it is, Snapple, and it was delicious, and that was only like, it was two for four. It was wonderful, and that's like one of these. That's less than, than the price of one of these. That's what you got to do. You got to get Snapple. Snapple it. That's what you got to do. Wolfenstein. Oh yeah, that's I don't know when Wolfenstein is coming out. Um my goodness, my goodness. 
Metal Gear movie directors reworking the script to make it more Kojima. Which I find interesting because basically all that means is that he's reworking the skull to make sure that it is it is as nonsensical as possible and doesn't make a lot of sense while making uh, a semblance of sense that no one can understand. Like the time when Hideo Kojima went to his team. Oh, I my face disappeared. Um, where did I go? There we go. Uh, like when Hideo Kojima went to his team to explain the story behind uh, Death Stranding and his own development team didn't get it at first and so he had to re-explain it. That's kind of hilarious when, when your own development team doesn't get it. So the fact that they're having to rework the script specifically to make it more Kojima, I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I'm actually not so, so sure if, uh, if, if that's a good thing. Yes, Bebop, maybe I need to get myself one of those Keurig, you know, those little Keurig K cups or whatever you put the cup in. I could do that. I could do that and set it on the desk. So whenever I need a coffee, you pop the pot in. I think on the whole, it's an initial investment. It's like a hundred bucks for one of those. You get the K cups for like 40 cents a piece. But at that point, you know, I, I think in the long term, you save some money. It'd be good. I need to just get into like a tea phase. As much as I hate the sound of getting in a tea phase, being one of those people that's like going, oh, I won't have a coffee. I'll have a tea. It's like gluten free. Oh, don't worry. I, I, uh, I'm I, gluten free now. You know, you feel sick. You have a headache or you, you are prone to getting colds. Oh, that's the gluten. Okay. It's the, it's the gluten. Don't worry. It's the gluten. You need to go gluten free. That's the key. Okay. This, let me slide my face over. I'm huge. That's what she said. That's what she wishes he said. Let me size this appropriately so it's uh, a little more palatable, shall we say. Um, tea is hip and trendy. I post about it on my, my lit Snapchat and stylish Instagram. Uh, it's not called a tea phase in Ireland. It's called being Irish. <laughs> Especially with your username being a Ninja Potato. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, oh, yes. Gluten-free. Liam says gluten-free has no benefits unless you're allergic to frigging gluten. Actually, there's a really a lot of evidence to say that going gluten-free is actually probably bad for you if you do not have uh, an allergic um or a propensity against gluten maybe is how you do it. An intolerance to gluten. Because gluten is a natural protein within wheat and humans have evolved to eat wheat and wheat products. And so when you take that away, it actually can cause a lot of issues in your spleen. It can cause issues um, all over the place and weight loss. It can just be a real mess. Not to mention that you are just, you're making your life miserable. Like you're eating stuff that tastes like cardboard. What are you doing? What are you doing to yourself? Like, at what point does looking cool in your eyes uh, meet a dead end? I don't know. It drives me crazy. Like, if you got an actual celiac, I've dated girls, like two girls with celiac disease, actual celiac disease, bone thin. Uh, they they have trouble consuming gluten because their body shuts it down, and they get like serious like stomach cramps, and they like get sick and want to vomit. It's a real issue. Um, and then you see these people that are like, I'm gluten free because I don't want gluten. It's like it almost demeans them because then they go into a restaurant, and ask it for something gluten free. And uh, people kind of laugh at them because it's like, oh, yeah, 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 it's totally, totally. Yeah, I would play uh, an Alex Jones clip sound clip right now, but I don't have my phone. So my soundboard is not accessible. I honestly don't know where my phone is. I hope I didn't leave it at work. That would be bad. I don't know where it is. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm hip and trendy. I eat cardboard and ruin my life by choice. That's what makes it cool. Um, but yeah, yeah. Icky's Pop says, hey, Luke, keep up the great work, man. Hunter says, hi. Hi, Hunter. Glad you guys could turn out. Um, yeah, see, gluten, that, that, makes your, uh, that makes your dick fly off. 
That's what it did. Oh, see, his dick's falling off. That's what it is. South Park. If you haven't watched South Park, you got to get on that train. You will get so many references that people here in the chat make. It's a great time. Uh, Skyrim and Fallout fans are skeptical of Bethesda's new modding plans. Can you blame them? I cannot because I am not insane. Bethesda announced paid mods in 2015 and the internet exploded in anger. A week later, everything got canceled because they stand by what they they uh, <laughs> initially state. They, they really stick to their guns. Um, last weekend, this was right after E3, Bethesda revealed the Creation Club, another stab at the concept of premium mods, and fans are wary that the history is going to repeat itself. And sure enough, what do you think happened? History has repeated itself. Now, mods... People, if you haven't played, um, if you haven't played Bethesda games with mods, then you probably won't really understand uh, just how significant these mods are to Bethesda's existence and to their game's existence actively in in the gaming community. Skyrim is not crazy popular currently on Xbox or on. PlayStation. The revitalized uh, re-releases helped, but there's only so long you can play one game. That's true of Skyrim. That's true of Fallout 3. That's true of New Vegas. That's true of The Witcher 3. I mean, it's true of every game. No matter how big it is, eventually it gets dry, it gets old, it gets repetitive, and it just gets boring. But mods can really, really help that, and they can enhance an experience that was previously very dry and uh, was not as fantastic as it could have been so for instance let me pull this up right here i as i said earlier went through and started playing through uh fallout new vegas again and while playing through it here while playing through it i installed a mod that replaces the previous inventorying system with fallout 4's inventory system and i cannot go back I literally, like, cannot go back. Wait, let me try switching. Maybe if I go to this side, it'll, it'll be easier to see. Well, actually, no. Now I can't. I'm, I'm, I must be drunk. I don't know what's happening. Um, here we go. Here we go. Screen one. Like, look at this. I'm playing New Vegas, and I can actually use Fallout 4's inventory system, and it's fantastic. I don't know how I ever played before. I honestly don't. I tried going back and you couldn't play. I, it's like unplayable after this inventory system. I said the one like best innovation Bethesda's made in the last decade was the way that they handled inventory and, and searching. I think they call it quick loot um, in Fallout 4. Absolutely phenomenal and, and fantastic. Holy hand grenades. Another reason to love... Um, Fallout New Vegas is that they actually have holy hand grenades in the game. I also tried to make Raspusha. I want you guys to appreciate this. I tried to make Raspusha again, but they don't have the same character design, freedom, whatever. I'm not sure if there's a good clip of her. I did die there. Um, because I got attacked by all these guys. And that sucks. Look, I tried to remake her, but she ended up being fairly beautiful, and it kind of pissed me off. So we'll just say that this was Fallout, like this was Respusha, and then sometime between New Vegas and Fallout 4, something happened to her that made her look that way. She was previously beautiful, and then something happened. So we'll have to come up with some big epic story of Respusha. But I did want to say mods can really enhance the experience and make it from what was previously kind of a dry but good experience, it can make it fantastic. And that's what makes me go back. Playing Fallout New Vegas after Fallout 4 without mods is actually fairly difficult because you're constantly thinking this would be so much better if I had blah, blah, blah. And with mods, you can actually add that back and you can have that thing that you previously said it would have been great with. And uh, so Bethesda owes a lot to they're modders and they know that really bethesda games are in my opinion a vessel for mods and that's that's a good thing and a bad thing 
it it actually takes a lot of uh, credit away from Bethesda when you think about it, because so much of their success has been garnered from uh, what the modding community has done, and uh, unfortunately, they just take take it all for granted. In this case, trying to get money off of it now. How this works is that you have to buy credits, uh, creation club credits or creation credits or club credits, whatever they call them. Mm. And what that means is that then you buy those credits and then you use them to purchase an item that you would like or a mod that you would like. Basically microtransactions. Now, initially what they were going to do is basically modders were going to come in, they were going to put stuff they were going to publish it, and then you, like, the modder was going to get a cut, Steam would get a cut, and Bethesda would get a cut. Not, at least it's not clear that that's the way that this works now as it is in Fallout 4. Um, it, it, they've kept it all very un tight and under wraps. They've brought people on specifically. Um, <laughs> yeah, look, look at these comments. I won't read them off, but you can read. Um they've they've brought in these modders specifically community members and they've asked them to develop mods for them and then they get to go in and actually do it so what i thought would be fun is to actually do this live because we are live we are living and i'm ghetto that way so we're actually going to open up let me mute sound for this. We're actually going to open up Fallout 4. And we're going to look. We're going to look right here. Paid mods. Yeah, we'll do it live. Damn it. Yes, Brita. We will do it live. Here we go. Play. My voice gets low when it's raw. Yes, I know. Entry screen. Okay. Screen one. We don't need to do game capture right now. So this is uh, Raspusha's colors. Let me shrink my head so that you can actually see what's happening. There we go. Uh, so this is what you see on screen is that you get this little pop-up thing. Creation Club News. The modular military backpack is fully customizable with multiple bonuses. So basically, it's... Um, They've given us 100 free credits, and they give this little ad as to the new mod that they're promoting. So, let's try it. I have mods, and then I also have Creation Club. So, let's go to Creation Club. Uh, sure. I didn't read the terms of service. I'm probably going to be turned into a human Sentai pad. So, they give us 100 credits. The modular backpack they were advertising um, is 400 credits, so that's great. Uh, we can't get that. We can get a swamp camo paint job. We can't even get any of this stuff. Um, okay, what else can we get? They gave us 100 credits. None of this looks interesting. Um, it's some slight paint jobs for the Pip-Boy we can get. This is just a, a painting of, of power armor, but there's already a ton of those. Like, I don't get... I don't even see the paint job. I don't, I don't understand it. Okay. That's great. No, thank you. Weapons. There's two. Okay. Um, uh, I'm okay. World. Modern Furniture Workshop Pack for 300 credits. What, what even is this? It just... It puts modern looking furniture. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great. So all of this is for more than these are the featured ones. All of this is for more than a uh, hundred credits. So what they gave us is essentially enough to get a couple different paint mods on our, our pit boy, which is fantastic. This looks semi interesting, but this already exists as a mod. So I don't understand why why it exists here. Um, oh, purchase creation. It's not a it's not a it's a creation. It's a creation. So let's say we really want this. Four hundred credits. We gave they gave us. It's under my face. 
there's there's the hundred credits that they gave us right there if you can see it so if i drag my face up here maybe you can see better so let's try this let's purchase some credits okay they play a little doodad and then downloadable content purchase option it's an eight dollar minimum eight dollar minimum you can only buy 750 as the smallest unit or 1500 for 15 dollars 3000 for 25 dollars or 5500 for 40 dollars so 750 credits let's just do the math they gave us 100 we can get uh realistically we can get the backpack for 400 but then we're left with 350 um so like what what are we doing we have the other extra 100 so 450 we can get another one but they purposely give you 750 so you can't get two mods of of an equal value so you have to buy the 1500 option to be reasonable and all of a sudden you've spent 15 dollars on a game that's two years old for mods that you could have downloaded for free off of nexus what are we doing what are we doing like come on bethesda this is this is textbook greed if ea did this we'd be ticked they do do it in syndicate i'm not happy about it uh at least in syndicate they offer more variety and there aren't any other alternatives the reality is everything they're offering in creation club is already accessible outside of of this see like look at this L look at this like why are we why are we like look you can just do this and then download i i'm 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 just at, I'm at a loss i literally have no have no words here i'm just look paint boy or pit boy paint jobs we're gonna spend 50 credits on this no we're just gonna download it it had six new paint jobs six clapping symbol monkey removes them all uh like look at this this is hilarious i support free mods <laughs> it's a t-shirt no wonder people were getting banned and mods taken down. Can't ask for donations, huh? Bethesda wanted it all to themselves for extra. Ha, ah, enjoy. Apparently, mods were being taken down if you asked for donations because they want you to buy it through their store where they get a, the lion's share of, of cut. It's just, it's friggin' disgusting. Like, what even is this? The modding community is doing you a favor by allowing you to to have your game continue to be playable like your game is currently being played because of what these people are doing <clears throat> i understand the desire they what really ticks me off though is that they're taking money from it but they're passing it off trying to say that they're doing it for the modders that they're like we love our modding community and so we're going to give people a way to pay them okay well you could already just ask for donations you could just not delete mods that did that but okay so you're saying we're going to create a marketplace why are you taking a huge cut of it then oh sorry knock the mic why are you taking a huge cut of it then and they say well because we have to there's overhead involved i don't care how much overhead it is you could just put in a little system where i come right here healthier commonwealth where it adds uh, this mod brings commonwealth back to life by adding fluffy grass flowers and leaves to the trees it also retextures plants to give them a bit of color and small leaves it adds a lot of green without overdoing it or clustering inches on the map like okay like look at this this is a beautiful mod this is great okay um so i can just download it it cues it and then downloads it real time all you would have to do is hire one of your programmers to spend 10 minutes put a little button right here a big button. it could fill up this entire space it could be a giant button half the size of your monitor that just says donate and it takes you to donate 
through PayPal. And that's it. And then look, I have it. It's enabled. I can rate it. I can favorite it. I can report it if it does a bad job. The infrastructure is already there. This is pure greed. It is pure greed. There's like literally no, no real excuse for it. So, um, we'll close down, but the, uh, we'll close down Raspusha's home. She lives within fallout. No audio. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. I got it. Um, I knocked the mic, so it's okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, <laughs> it has to happen. It has to happen at least once in a in a show, right? It has to. <laughs> um. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. My goodness. Riveting audio. I agree. Hopefully it wasn't out for too long. I'm not sure at what point it cut out, but should be fixed now. Red Dead 2, that's going to be interesting to see how they handle that because uh, Rockstar is making so much money from GTA 5 Online, but they're also going to bring in an online element to like to, to Red Dead. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how they handle that. I'm not sure how they're planning to approach it, but it's going to be really interesting to see how Red Dead 2 pans out. It's probably going to be absolutely fantastic. And it's Red Dead or, or Rockstar always puts out games where you play it and then you're like, are you guys even trying? Like, have you seen this? This is so good. That's what I felt like after playing Witcher 3 for the first time. That's what I felt like after Hellblade where I, I they charge $30 for it. It's a short experience, but I look around and I'm like, are you guys even trying? Like, really, this is not, is they, I mean, I'm sure it's difficult, but it can't be that hard. I think it's just, it's the corporatization of video games. You know, uh, ZeniMax goes to Bethesda Game Studios and says, put microtransactions in. I think elements of Bethesda's uh, leads and executives and development uh, heads are a little greedy. I looked it up. Apparently, uh, apparently Todd Howard, the game director, um gets paid like an uh, like 1.2 million dollars a year that's that's a lot of money i get that you make some some massive brilliant games but at some point like at what point does your integrity kick in and you're like you know what i need to um you know I, i'll take a pay cut or something we'll bring on some writers and do something really fantastic. That's where the passion is. I think the passion is probably a, a bit more for money at this point. I have no reason to believe otherwise. Um, Elon Musk needs to open a game development company studio and publish company, uh, publisher company. Maybe, but Elon Musk, I mean, what? look at him. Elon Musk takes billions from uh, the U.S. government for the development and research of his companies. Um it's uh that's that's a big thing if the government stopped funding a lot of his research he'd be screwed he'd be screwed absolutely screwed um yeah can you imagine todd howard saying i'll take a pay cut so we can hire some decent writers i cannot um but like hideo kojima you could see that that happening you could see him taking like okay i'm gonna take a cut so that we can expand the studio to make this game. Because his goal is to create a piece of art. It's not, where does this get me? And uh, so you can see Hideo Kojima doing that, but you can't see Todd Howard doing that. And I think that explains a lot. That shows where the the real um, passion, where the real passion is. Um, I mean, when I think of Todd Howard, all I think of 
is. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just ridiculous. And I mean, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. <laughs> you can never have uh, too much Alex Jones. Really? Oh, I hope you guys could hear that because it, it the audio looked weird. I hope you guys could hear it. Did you hear me? Yeah. I heard you, Alex. Don't worry. I heard you. How dare you? How dare you do that to me? Uh, it just makes me so happy. I, oh, it just makes me happy. Uh, I want a uh, brown bag special. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. I at thought all. you were a woman. <laughs> oh yes, we were. Um, we were going through Alex Jones withdrawal. Yeah, it's a feature, not a bug. <laughs> it's a feature. It's like uh, Assassin's Creed Unity when uh, Ubisoft was trying to argue that that was all the glitches they had were actually tears in the Animus, and everyone was like, "Are you, are you, are you being serious? Right? Like what? Are you being serious right now?" And they're like. No, yeah, we're joking. That, that was a joke. We know. We know that you were going to, like, maybe they'll believe us. Like, oh, these weird glitches, visual glitches. Oh, those are intentional. It's like a big meta story. It's like, no. No, you're stupid. You're a stupid person. Oh. oh. Anyway. Anyway, let's do the final flush real quick. Let's do the final flush. So I'm going to freeze the uh, chat. I don't know where. I don't know where the, the chat went. But there we go. Doo, 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 doo. And no, Rangman, I did not see the interview with Austin Wintry. I would love to see that. I'm actually singing a, a song of his in a concert this, this winter. I'm working with a vocal instructor. Um... Because actually, like, doing these this type of content, and while I'm doing this, put all your, your comments to try to make me crack up for the final flush in the in the chat. But um, I actually, like, when you're doing a podcast, I don't like taking breaks. I don't have another guest on here to fill out the, the conversation so I can catch my breath and continue on or collect my thoughts. No, we're just going. We're going whole hog. We don't rest. I'm human. <laughs> I'm an animal. I don't sleep. I allow sleep to enter me, not the other way around. I like that's how we do. And when you do it that long, you have to control your voice. You have to be able to breathe properly and control your your you know voice so that you don't damage it. When I first started doing podcasts, I I would lose my voice the next day. It was tough. It was tough. Um, but the the vocal instructor actually can help with that. Plus, you learn to sing well, and it's it's a good time. So let's uh, let me pull this chat over here, so that let me. Uh, I had this set up. I need to just make it its own scene. Let me scale this down and scale it up so that we can all see. Kyle Reese is convinced the Earth is flat. Um, I have no words. I actually have to take an astronomy course this semester. And, uh, he, the instructor asked us all to write down the things we were most looking forward to learning and doing. And I said, disproving flat earthers like, uh, you do. What else do you do? I don't know. Okay. Let's try this. Um, I, I don't have my, I don't have my... <laughs> Friggin' phone to I have a watch. I have my smart watch. We'll we'll do this. Should be able to keep time. Okay. And start. You have a minute. Oh, wrong way. Oh damn it. Uh 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 uh. Bro I masturbate so much that in a month my sock would be so stale with you that I could snap in half. No joke, it's gross and it's Great, my God, I want to finish out. I play it once or twice. I don't know why I read it like that. <laughs> they were in all over Scotland. Uh, Troll Thesda. That's pretty good. Troll Thesda. Do you think they are really trolling? Do you think it's like they, they're like, I, I almost like Pete Hines at E3. I got the gist. I got this feeling that he didn't want to be out there and they were just making him. So it's almost like they have all of their families locked behind stage with guns to their heads. And they're like, if you don't go out... 
we're going to kill your family. You have to go out and talk about Doom, how great it is. Um, Doom VR. No, we're not including DLC. Um, oh, I just realized it's cutting off the text. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's woman's equal to balls? Lip gloss. It took me a second. It took me a second. That's real bad. Uh, guys, don't worry. The Creation Club is extremely beneficial. It will end up funding what Bethesda fans really want. A sequel to Fallout 4, the Pip-Boy companion app. <laughs> I I laughed. Damn it. Damn it. I, I wasn't paying attention. Neat Sarah. I am Lukey, and I'm going to critique Dishonored because Neat told me, and I don't want his girlfriend to ban me from her Minecraft server. I got to get around to that. I, I really do have to get around to Dishonored. My uh, little brother loves it. Um... Uh, how do you call a Russian tree? Dimitri. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, I actually really like that. That's good. The past, present, and future and went into a bar. It was tense. <laughs> They're so cringy. I love it. I love it. Bethesda is good. That is a joke. That is a good joke. It's easy to laugh at flat earthers. Um... Life is Strange has well-crafted dialogue. I must beg you to think of the frogs. Think of the frogs. The frogs, man. You really should think of the frogs. Praise Pepe. Um, it's hard to prove the Earth is a sphere. Earth is a pal parallelogram. Um, oh, oh, is this going to cut it off? No, I think we're okay. Um, I made a criticism of YouTube and lost live chat. Really? That's awesome. Wow, that's terrible. CD Projekt is the standard for RPGs now. I would agree. I would agree. Remember, we need to remind uh, him every, uh, once every second stream. Yes. I I forget. I forget. I'm a forgetful person. Okay, that was well over a minute. I, I kind of lost track. I wanted to get through them all. Um, see, this is concerning because this watch attaches to my phone via Bluetooth, and it lost connection. It doesn't have it connected. So... That makes me think I left it at work. I don't know how I would do that, but that's concerning. So I probably have to drive up there. Great. Oh crap. I went to the ATM. Oh, I really hope it's not up there. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go. <laughs> I, I may have just lost my phone at an ATM. That's not good at all. I, I oh crap. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming out. I just had a heart attack. Oh, that sucks so balls. I I can't even form a sentence. Thank you for watching. I'm worried now. Um, bye. Bye. <laughs> Son of a... Uh, not good. Not good. Not good.